folks, I'm Tom Basso, and welcome to 40 Years of Great Games. We are now up to the year 2011. 2011 has a lot of great games in it. Uh, last time I talked about 2010, and I thought kind of there was a not a dip in quality per se, but it's nothing compared to the following years. Well, 2011 did not have that problem. There's a lot of great games that did not make my list. I'll save them to the end, and there's at least one I'm going to get garbage over for not putting on my list. But there was just a lot of fun games that came out. And remembering, while I'm saying these are the best games of each year, I'm saying these are my favorite games. So you may say, well, this game's loved by more people, and that's quite possibly true. Um, I just These are the ones I love a lot. Number 10 for 2011 is First and Goal. First and Goal from r, &R Games is a football dice game designed by Stephen Glenn. It does not seem like a football dice game would do that well. And up to this point, I had been in love with Pizza Box Football, which was a dice-chucking uh, football game, which was really enjoyable. But this game really just, it, 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 it drew me in. But then at this, almost simultaneously with the game, they released expansion teams for it. And that's where I really fell in love because each expansion team had different dice. And in this game, you basically would play almost like a rock, paper, scissors game with the other, your opponent where you both play a card. You flip those, you pick an offensive card, they pick a defensive play. Then those plays tell you what dice you get to roll and then you see what happens. Very simple concept, a lot of fun. I thought simulated a football game very well. Number nine, the cooperative games had hit full force by 2011, is Flashpoint Fire Rescue. Flashpoint Fire Rescue is a game in which you go into a burning house and rescue people as firefighters. That is a great theme, and it is a theme I am surprised with the six million zombie games out there, why I currently know maybe two games about firefighting which is a very noble thing to begin with, but also is exciting and interesting. And that's the way this game is. Fires are breaking out all over the house. You have to go through, put out the fires, rescue people, get them out of the house. Each person has a special ability. It has a family game version, which was simple, but yet still fun. And then an advanced version, which let you use special abilities for each of the firefighters. Really cool game. I'm surprised it doesn't get more love, but it is if you're looking for like a game that introduced people to cooperative games, this is certainly one I would recommend. Flashpoint Fire Rescue. Number eight is a game that is affecting 2016 so much. And it was a game that came from Hasbro, of all people, and that is Risk Legacy. Risk Legacy was unlike anything anyone had ever seen at this point. It was Risk, which for many of us was not that exciting of a thing. And then you open it up and you find out that half the stuff in the game was sealed. That you had to get to a certain thing to open these packs, which would then add more components to the game. That parts of the game would be ripped up that parts of the game would be added or modified or stickers on the board, which made some people's minds explode and they hated the game just for hearing that. But I was fascinated by it and it was fun. Yes, it was Risk. And uh, Risk is not the greatest game to build this framework on, but it made Risk really enjoyable. And this storyline and the different things that happened in the game was so much fun. The pieces were great. There's some events in this game uh, that I still like. When I meet people, I'm like, hey, when did you open this box? What happened? And just fun aspects of that. Really, really cool. Risk Legacy. And now we're seeing more Legacy games come out. Number seven is a game that I did not find out about till 2013 or 14, unfortunately. And that's Ultimate Warriors. Ultimate Warriors, you have a bunch of guys in a ring and you're rolling dice and chucking them and fighting each other and stabbing each other. Oh, I really like it. I have this in my collection. It's a great game. Each turn, you, players will play a card that tells you how much you move, how much range attack you have, and how much fighting attack. And you're moving around and you're throwing dice and you're hitting everybody because you're not trying to kill anyone per se because you get points from getting anyone. You do want to take everybody else out. There is player elimination, although it doesn't happen until the end of the game much. And so you're, the games are not that long that it matters. But if you want a game where you just go in and throw dice and attack other people, and each person, like one person has fewer hit points, but they're smaller and harder to hit. And the big dragon, who is, you know, a lot of hit points, but just easy to wail on. Very, very fun, just beer and pretzel style game, Ultimate Warriors. Speaking of that, number six, Dungeon Fighter. Last year I talked, I mean, last, in the 2010 list, I talked about the Catacombs, a flicking dungeon crawl. Well, Dungeon Fighter is a dice throwing one. No, I mean literally throwing. You are throwing dice at a target, bouncing them onto this target to hit monsters, which is insane, but it works really well. It's silly and it's funny, but you throw it there, the, the closer you get to the middle, that's how much damage you do to the monsters. But as more monsters come in the game, the monsters get more and more difficult. 
Uh, and so you do that by throwing it behind your back, by putting it on your elbow and dropping it off and all sorts of different things. You can get weapons that do more damage, but you have to, you know, knock it off your hand or what have you. It's really funny to watch. It's really hard. Um, and, but it's silly, great fun. I love it. Dungeon Fighter. Number five is one of those games that, that made a company, in essence. That company now is, uh, well, it's a com combination of Greater Than Games um, and Dice Hate Me, but Greater Than Games came on the, on the table because of Sentinels of the Multiverse, a very popular game, which spawned many, many expansions and a board game. But Sentinels of the Multiverse was a small card game, which was not really a deck building game or anything. You just had a deck of cards for your hero. You picked a couple other heroes and you cooperatively fought against a villain. It did not take superheroes from Marvel or DC or Image. It had its own superheroes. It was just, it was the most superhero-y game at the point it came out, which was not hard because there was almost no good ones out at that point in time. But this one broke that down. It's so much fun. In fact, I hear that the app is really good. You can find the app online and play it. Uh, but uh, man, this was like an undiscovered gem. We found it at Gen Con. It was like amazing. We played it. We told everyone about it. People were playing it everywhere, all over the place. And it has an extremely strong fan base at Sentinels of the Multiverse. Number four is another deck building game. This is from uh, Stronghold Games, and this is Core Worlds. Now, I didn't know what to expect from Core Worlds. Uh, deck building games at this point, I was like, uh, what's the new deck building game going to do? But Core Worlds was not so much about building a deck of cards as it was about manipulating these cards and saying, okay, I'm going to take these guys and put them in front of me, and you slowly build up an army in front of you, and then you go and attack a planet. And then you take that planet and capture these planets and put them in front of you. I love the theming of the game. The theming of the game is really, I mean, it's not directly based on it, but really feels like foundation uh, by Asimov. It has that feel to it. Your technology and the way the game goes gets better and better. The cards get cooler and cooler. Uh, the expansion really makes the game shine. That's Core Worlds. Number three is Star Trek in a Box. Well, I know that Star Trek Ascendancy has come out this year and that's everyone's buzz about that. But Star Trek Fleet Captains from WizKids, I did not know what to expect. It was a giant box. There was all kinds of spaceships in it for the Klingons and for the Federation. And then we set up the board, the components were eh, okay. But then we started going through and it was like, wow, we're playing stuff from the original Star Trek season. We're playing stuff from the next generation. You have these, it kind of used the shuffling thing from Smash Up and you put some decks together and it had different characters and almost everything you could imagine from Star Trek was there. It was like playing through a season of the show. And there was combat, but there's also sending away missions. You ran into tribbles and you ran into all sorts of cool stuff that happened throughout this game. It's big, it's grandiose, it's sprawling. It's starting to die down in popularity for me just because of that sprawling nature, but you'll notice it's still number three. A lot of fun, Fleet Captains. Number two is Airlines Europe. Now, Alan Moon made Union Pacific many years ago. It's his, his first train game. Of course, Ticket to Ride is now the train game he's most well known for. But Airlines Europe was built upon Union Pacific. And this is a game that it kind of took the same aspect, but instead of trains, was you were making plane routes in Europe, and you uh, are building up different airlines, and at the same time, investing in those airlines. So it's a stock market game, but it's a very simple one. Essentially, you are kind of playing like almost a game of chicken, like, okay, I'm going to make this airline bigger, and I'm going to invest in that airline, or am I going to make this bigger and invest in a different airline, and then come back to that one? There's so many options in it, and it really scales well, too. Uh, but it, it plays smoothly, even though it's a light stock market game. It has the feel of something that's heavier. I highly love this game. I enjoy every playing of it, Airlines Europe. And my favorite game from 2011 is King of Tokyo. Yes, I really do like Ultimate Warriors, and Ultimate Warriors and King of Tokyo are very similar. And I get yeah, or sometimes I might want to play Ultimate Warriors, but King of Tokyo, let me take Godzilla vs. King Kong. Yeah, they weren't their names. They called them other names. But you had these monsters, and you came in, and you rolled dice Yahtzee style to get points and or attack someone. And this is a game that I don't believe in 2011 was my favorite game of the year. Um, but as time goes by, I find that I'm still playing King of Tokyo. It's a great game to teach new people. And they keep coming out with expansions. They just came out with one that lets you use the uh, monsters from King of New York, which was a follow-up in King of Tokyo. But just so much fun to play this game. And every time I play it, I have a blast. It is a solid, amazing game. My favorite game from 2011, King of Tokyo. 
There's some games that I did not mention, Mage Knight probably being the biggest omission. I really do like Mage Knight. It's a really great game. I just don't play it as much anymore, and I think the Star Trek version of it would replace that one for me these days. Also, Quarriers. Oh, Quarriers. I really love Quarriers. Ninjato, Yomi, A Few Acres of Snow. This was a really great year of great games. What are your favorites? Tell me why I'm wrong. Tell me what you think are the best games of the year in the comments below. This has been 40 Years of Great Games. I'm your host, Tom Vassell. Thanks for watching The Dice Tower. Thanks so much for watching The Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.